Hello, this is Tomasz Szarczyński for Tats Plus. Welcome to the fourth part of modeling of Hern. Uh, save your scene as Hern stick copy. Select those meshes inside your base Hern and delete them. And now select Hern base and press Tab to go to face mode. And now activate symmetry on X. Select two polygons on the base of the antlers, press L to select group, double click on head and delete the rest of the geometry. We need only antlers for this part of modeling. So now we need to bring our backdrop images. So go to content directory and drag those PNG files to the 3D viewport and now move them up on the Y axis. Okay, and you can see they should be just over there. And now we need to scale those backdrop images. So activate the cube tool and type in values that you can see on the screen. So it will be 2 meters 16 and it will be 0 43 meters. Okay. And set segments to 1. And press, uh, you need to zero out y axis. and press apply. Now in item mode move everything up just that the bottom will touch the origin point and in polygon mode double click on cube cut it press N to create new mesh and paste it. Ctrl V. Change view to wireframe select all three backdrop items go to its properties and tick use uniform size and press out of it. Now they will snap to the background geometry. We don't need it anymore, so delete them. And we need to set right projections to all those backdrop images. So select the first one and just like the name said, change its name to stick. Back, okay, and change its projection to back. Now select another one, change to stick front, and change its projection to front. And last one, stick right, and change its projection to right. Now go to the right view, and something is wrong. The image is squashed, and we need to check flip and go to transform palette. And as you can see, this Z scale stays at 100 and we have to have all values the same. So type in and now everything is good. We need to just move this right backdrop image to the right position, as you can see. Now we are set to model the stick. Select all and press Ctrl G to create group, change its name to back BCK and now we can start to model. So select all and just press J to lock all your backdrop images, change its name to iron stick and we can now move those antlers down to match our reference. Double click on polygons and move in polygon mode. Okay, we can match it, change its scale and go to front view. As you can see, we almost there. We need to change this geometry uh, to fit 
to our backdrop images. So now we will do the rest of the stick. So we need to now go to polygon mode and turn off symmetry, select one half and delete this. We will mirror this later and now we can move this part of the antler to over there okay and we need to start moving polygon by polygon in the right direction and now select all polygons of this spike oops not this one okay and with a right mouse button select those polygons press alt spacebar to change lasso selection and now activate move tool and move spikes to match the reference as you can see we can select edges and move it all the way down here and after doing this create cylinder with eight edges place it on the bottom of the head of the stick and now we can extrude it so move this with the move tool activate scale tool also and scale this down then press B to activate bevel tool and just drag in the viewport and to reactivate the tool without dropping it press shift and click in the viewport this will reactivate the tool and you can just draw your geometry right away okay so shift click shift click go down shift click and again go all the way down and shift click shift click and we can just insert it and again shift click and again shift click and this way it is much quicker than the other programs pretty so now we got the bottom side so we need to press C to activate the slice tool and slice and give to adjust to have quads on the bottom side with a with this selected press B and we can jump to upper section as you can see I have speed up the video to show you how it was done without wasting our time because we did uh, we did matching reference before uh, in first part of modeling of Hern and this is uh, a quick reminder how it was done how you can do it in, in your case so now I, as you can see I'm selecting edges by double click and moving all loops of edges to the right position and I'm just using scale tool to match our reference and move to get to the right and desired position so as you can see I'm using scale tool with a scale in one plane the circles uh, that I use just let me scale in two axes at once okay as you can see it is very nice and convenient way of working so we got now and now just select polygons on the bottom and scale them okay and we got this part covered so go to upper part go to press tab to go to face mode and slice this top polygon to four quads select this and cut it and paste it again in place so move this pasted part to the branch end to the branch leftovers and extrude it with a shift X and now move these polygons in place and again select all by double click 
center them and now copy and paste them again and do the second branch left over so now we can scale this all the way down select polygons and activate bridge tool and connect those parts of geometry and do the same for the upper part now we can just take these extra edges that we don't need and we get nice and clear geometry and we can just refine the ends of the branch leftovers so now select two polygons press l and then alt c to activate loop slice two polygons press l alt c to activate loop slice and add one edge that will hold this subdivision surface and now we are ready to make head so as you can see i'm using bevel tool again so shift click shift click shift click as you can see i'm leaving the edges behind so uh, now i've got head of the stick ready okay and now in normal mode let's refine this shape so to do that press select two polygons press l activate loop slice and set its count to three and mode to uniform and repeat this for the up lower parts as you as you can see the uh, loop slice to remember these settings and i can easily just with one click uh, repeat this cutting and now we we need to refine the head of the this mesh so duplicate this okay and turn off base mesh change its name to base uh, constraint because we will be constraining our new geometry based upon this mesh so base constraint and we need to go to right view select with the last two selections some polygons just this upper part okay and shift up arrow shift up arrow and go to fall off activate linear fall off and activate scale tool this way fall off will snap to select the geometry change its axis and reverse and now scale in z axis okay squash a little and now reselect again shift up arrow to expand selection and again activate scale tool press y and then scale to match your reference after that you press ctrl d twice to dice geometry and we need and we now have base geometry ready we will draw new geometry upon this mesh we need to create an eye for this character and for this go press f6 and go to human and choose eyeball and we want to have this eyeball realistic right click on it and press lot and we get eyeball in the scene Take these textures and put them in the texture group. And now we can see we got our fall off. So press escape twice to get rid of fall off. Select in item mode this eyeball and move it way up to match reference. Okay, now it's beauty. So we need to stick this eye to the front. And bring it a little bit forward. As you can see, now we can we have this eye sticking out of the surface, and we need to create those parts of the of the geometry. So press N M to activate new mesh, change its name to Retopo. and 
you know, to cylinder tool. Go to right view, and we need to create eyelets. So go to sphere tool and draw the sphere in the viewport. As you can see, we should roughly cover the eye with a sphere and now we can move the geometry but change the axis to X and now we can open this eyelid and I think we are almost ready with the size of it okay hit spacebar to drop the tool and go to polygons select this move a little bit forward and we need to select in edges mode this edge and we have to split them so go to edge and press split now we got two separate parts of geometry so select this part that is on the back side and move to the inside of the head and press F to flip polygons and now we're left with this triangle so we need to delete this but maybe first we should activate uh, symmetry so go to polygon mode activate symmetry we need to delete this vertex and now in polygon mode we will recreate this part so select those two edges and click bridge and we need to deactivate outer connection from the tool pipe and continuous bridge and now we got nice bridge elements so now we need to stitch this together as you can see like so to do that go to polygon mode and delete those polygons we got now open eyelids we won't be animating this so we don't need to have uh, eyelids completely uh, clo closable so we can select those edges and those edges and we need to press B to activate bevel tool and create new edges so now we will just draw geometry so select one vertex two one two three and press p to create polygon and again one two three and p to create polygon one two three and press p to create polygon and we now got stitch surface but it's some kind of stretching out so we need to make this made from quads so we need to deselect those edges and let's create one big polygon over here so press P okay and now we got angles that we have to get rid of so now press edge slice up C to add one edge and again C to create one edge and we can cut it over there so now we're left with only quads so that is good okay perfect And we need to uh, round this shape a little, so select those two polygons and move them uh, in the right direction. Okay. And select those vertices. We should uh, try to make this more rounded on the uh, side from the right view. Okay, and we can 
I'll select those points and move them just to get rid of uh, any uh, harsh ed edges. So select this and we can now move this to the head. And position the eye. We can bring it a little bit, bit, bit to front. And go get back to the retopo mesh. And now we will select this edge uh, on the back side by double click. And we can now turn on constraint mode, set it to background. Make sure it's set to offset is set to zero millimeters and we can just stick this edge to the background geometry so we got edges and we can just scale them I activated edge extend by clicking shift X but we can turn off symmetry and this way we can just squash the eye but it is not the way we want it so we can see now we, we have to change constraint mode to screen axis and then we can slide edges along the background geometry so as you can see now I'm scaling this uh, loop of edges but they all stick to the surface behind them. It is a very nice way of working because it allows us to focus on one shape. As you can see in front view, I can see that is nearly a um, ellipsoid. So we can now activate edge extent. With a uh, scale plane and with a scale plane, I can manipulate two axes at once so I can just track this eye shape eye socket shape around our eyelids so now I'm just refining this and as you can see I run mesh cleanup I made a custom shortcut for this so we can now have all in place and we need to scale this lower eyelid and upper eyelid. So as you can see, I'm just constraining this with a point constraint. And I change our constraint to background to point. This way all sticks to the underlying surface. Now when it is done, we can just deactivate this constraint. And move a little bit forward this whole eye structure and I believe we are ready to continue it looks quite nice we can select those ring and go to the back activate background constraint again and just stick it so we got nice wrinkles around the uh, eyelids And I believe we only need to connect the end, this inner side with this outside of the eyelids. So turn off meshes that are in the background. And now we can select only this part. So with the lasso select selection, select only polygons just like me, this in the front, and press shift up arrow to expand selection. We can just paint this, and we can paint also this part. And now copy this, and select again, and scale this. 
scale this pasted element down and press F to flip polygons and scale this little bit down one more time and now we need to connect those inner side and outside of the eyelets so double click on edges and activate bridge tool and we can try to activate it from right click menu and activate bridge tool set segments to one and press on the screen now model will connect this and turn off snapping and now go to subdivision mode as you can see now we need to make this uh, edge more rounded so select two polygons press l to activate to select all loops be between them and press alt c change um, loop slice to one okay it is rounding enough so we can just scale this part a little bit down so to see more clearly what we are doing so select also to here and activate scale tool and scale it down and we get nice opening of the eye and we need to change this inner side so we need to recreate the same steps la la last as we did for the first part so now delete this polygon select two edges and activate bridge again Sometimes it's hard from the right click menu to get this bridge tools. So we need to go to basic, duplicate and bridge, click in the report. And we got bridge polygons. So now select these polygons, press Alt C to slice them. But it will slice all loop slice, so press L. So press C to activate edge slice and then bevel it. And in edges mode we get 34 edges and we got 26 edges in the inside part. So we need to add edges to the inside. And again press C to activate edge slice and now we can just see how much edges we got we can activate bridge with this two and now we we got 28 so we need one more edge okay select those edges by double clicking and press p to create polygon we can hide it this mesh because it is covering our view so activate edge slice and slice again and again just like we did in the front part of the eye okay and again we can just add it point over there okay so now double click on this edge and we got 34 and we got this edge is an extra edge we don't need and we now we got 68 edges selected so we can just press bridge I'm using my little shortcut and I bridge wrong edges so select those edges and now go to the duplicate tab and press bridge okay we got inside and outside of the uh, eyelids connected Go to press tab to go to subdivision mode and I believe we can just refine this by creating triangles so activate edge slice again and slice this 
and this edge we don't need as you can see now we're left only with quads and one triangle it will be hiding inside of the uh, this island so it won't hurt us all right let's refine shape of this I one more time so select this two press L Alt C to add, add edge okay and these two press L Alt, Alt C again and we've got now in subdivision mode better representation of the edge of these uh, eyelids and we need to repeat the steps for the inside so double select two polygons press L and then Alt C the two polygons press L then Alt C and as you can see we can just select this inner edge and activate scale tool and bring them closer together as you can see now the edge of this uh, eyelids is very nicely rounded and we can just try to make it look more natural so select those edges and just bring them forward to add some more volume to this and we can now go to shaded mode activate fall of linear draw this fall off on the screen like me and reverse this and choose symmetric on the end and now we will push those edges forward but the fall off will modulate uh, tool strength so the edges in the middle will be moved uh, much uh, harder than those on the fall off edge fall off so I move it okay I believe we are done here And I think it looks quite good. And now we can just turn on base constraint mesh and we need to do a double over this. And now I'll hide base temp for now and we need to go to the hand stick layer okay and now we will stick this uh, antlers on the head so to do that go to polygon mode select two polygons press L and shift up arrow to select more activate move tool and press alt X to go to local action center and now just scale those polygons make them smaller and move it so let's double click on this edge and activate shift x edge extend and extend a little then run edge extend again and we can just rotate and move in this direction double click this and delete it and rotate this edge loop okay and now we need to go to tool properties and choose background constraint to stick these edges to the head surface make sure its background is set change its type to vector and offset to zero and tick double sided Activate Move Tool, Alt X to change Accent Center to Local and just move like me on the viewport and as you can see now the edge is sticking to the surface. So Shift 
x to activate edge extend and we need to have set a geometry constraint to screen axis and now with a plane handle you can scale these edges and they will automatically stick to the head beneath them so we can undo that one time because we got errors so double click on this edge activate turn off snapping activate move tool alt x for local action center and move it slightly up all right and we can begin with the rest of the modeling And now we are ready to create all structures. So double click on Antla, activate mirror, shift V, and click on the viewport, change axis to X, and zero out center of this mirror. And we got Antlas ready, so now we need to cut them from this layer. So double click, Ctrl X to cut them, uh, select Retopo, and paste them. Now delete those empty layers that we don't need anymore. And before we do uh, retopology, we need to hide the inside of the eye socket. So select those polygons and shift up arrow, shift up arrow until you get all these inside of the eye socket selected. Now you can paint, uh, select those remaining polygons. As you can see, select them. All right, I believe we got all so H to hide it and now we need to add one piece geometry so bring up your tools activate cylinder tool and draw on the screen we need to create base of the stick so create circle and now double click on this rotate like so, go to the right view and now we need to place it over there activate the extrude tool delete those polygons and activate scale tool go to constraint and set to background and turn on vector and scale those down in, in one plane until they snap to the background geometry and now we can turn off snapping and we are ready to do retopology. So with this all we need to hide this and we need to hide this part. Okay and we are now can go to retopology tab we can just make this a little bit more dense so press d to create more geometry and now go to retopology tab okay as you can see all it's changed we got retopology colors on this viewport and we will just use topology pen to extrude some edges so click on edge and just drag it until they snap maybe this will be a bit better okay so select edge and snap it again just like so and then we can snap point and extrude edge and snap it again You, you have got to make sure that you have shift selected and then drag edges this way you will create new polygons so shift drag until they snap okay we got some asymmetric problem here but we will manage all oh, right so yep stick and we can can symmetry the geometry to help us uh, out. 
Okay, and we now can do the topology on this mesh. So, the topology pen has got uh, plenty of shortcuts and it's really nice way of working. So activate topology pen again, shift and drag to create new geometry. You can also shift drag uh, vertices. Okay, we can undo that. To delete part of the geometry, you can press Control and middle mouse button to delete everything that is under your mouse. It can be edges or polygons. Control Z to undo that. To add an edge loop, you can shift and middle mouse click to add an edge. Okay, and you can shift drag polygons and you can shift drag. As you can see, we can shift it, and now we can just control Z and drag those points. And sometimes it's best to use only edge shifting. Okay, now it will be much easier. Shift drag, shift drag, shift drag, shift drag, and, and again, you can shift drag here, shift drag over there, and as you can see, we are just filling the space between all those points, and I believe we can add edge in a second. You can also have this control at edge loop. So now press middle mouse button and shift. I just placed it over here. Okay. Control Z. Something is not quite good. All right. So now add one edge and another one, and you can just drag those points over there and also over here. And we can delete this and just stitch it. Okay. Now we got nice topology. We can move those. And just to make nice distribution of polygons. All right, as you can see. Now it should take some time to refine this shape already. And now we can add some edges. And sometimes they stick too high. And you can now move this edge down. So remember to add edge, you should shift and middle mouse. Uh, while you are over the edge, it is important. So now shift drag and over the edge, and then you can add one edge. Okay, and you can shift drag, and you can uh, add some edges over here also, and just stitch it. Okay, as you can see, it's quite easy, but sometimes needs some practice to be able to get what you want. So now we can add some geometry here and we can now shift drag this edge. One thing is good about this uh, because of point of constraint that is automatically uh, turned on that all created points will stick to the surface uh, that is in the background. So now we can resolve this very dense part. So shift, drag, shift, drag, shift, drag. And now we can also get this point. As you can see, it is very nice way of working, but needs some practice and patience because you have to think how the geometry is flowing, but you get a very, very good 
amount of uh, control over it. So no matter what you want, you can shift points, shift vertices, or just shift drag uh, edges. Okay, now we can just make those uh, polygons square-like. So now we are going to get this part stitched all right and I believe we can do it like so one more one more time and again and I will need to do some extruding so now gently place geometry over the surface we need to uh, bear in mind that sometimes when a model sees both sides, uh, the back, fan, back, back fence in geometry, it sometimes snaps to them, so you have to change camera angle to help model to see the, the, the real geometry that you want to stick to. Okay, and now as you can see, I'm just moving points over the surface, so it will be connected to the rest. And we can add edge over there and one over there. And I believe we are very close to closing this gap. So now you can just shift drag points. As you can see, now we We can add one edge over here and over there and we're left with the triangle but we can delete it ctrl z and add one edge over here also just one maybe not so we need to drag this drag this and we need to delete those remember to delete you can control middle mouse over the geometry that you want to remove and we can just refine topology in this area so i believe we need to drag this point over here and add, add one edge loop here and we now cut quads. Okay. Sometimes the topology uh, requires a lot of attention uh, to the polygon flow, so you have to be thinking about every point that you uh, are laying down over the surface. Okay. So we need to just drawing these points over here and we can remove this unwanted polygon sometimes model will snap too much to, to existing geometry so in this case it's better to just create new polygons in some distance from the existing ones and move points uh, uh, after that So after the topology is done, you are end up with something looking like this. So we need to connect both head and base of the stick together. So now uh, unhide base 10, mesh, select it, and go to subdivision mode, press tab, and then press D to subdivide it. Go to polygon mode, double click on or polygons, Ctrl X to cut it and go to retopolyer and paste this. Now go to edges, double click on them and bridge them. Okay, so we are ready to sculpt. We need to activate Matcap Shader and go to Advanced OpenGL to see it in the report. And now delete base temp mesh, we don't need it anymore. And we need to do one more thing, go to front view, press O and 
going to go to active meshes and active meshes and visibility show backdrop items okay so we don't want to have uh, this entrance totally uh, symmetrical so we need to cut some of the spikes just like on the reference image so select polygons and shift up arrow uh, we can delete them go to perspective view and turn off show backdrop okay so we need to now double click on edge press p to create polygon and press c to activate edge slice and slice it until you get four quads okay select this press b oh, snapping turn off turn on okay and we need to add some edge loops to hold geometry in place so as you can see i'm adding edge about three and a half percent here and also press the uniform and go to subdivision mode everything looks perfect so we need to make this spike look cut this spike so again we need to see our reference so we need to delete this okay and selection border and we can make this even bigger okay and we can move this in this direction all right as you can see now we need to select these edges and also we need to scale this okay and remember to use alt x to reposition your action center to set to local and we need to also scale this okay and i believe we are almost done just small tweaking of shape over here okay select this and move it and delete this now we got nice flow of geometry and i believe we can just move those elements all right and these edges on the back we need to select and move to the back okay and one more but we can just move it like so and now also move it this vert like so all right and we can move it also over there and this we can also move it to the back of our character and now we can see how it looks so select this and we can go to front view and move it over there so edge select and move it over here double click and just rotate this and move it over there now it's start to shaping correctly we can now move it even over over there oops we got one point left so select this word and move it up all right and i believe we can go to subdivision mode to see how it looks toggle words and we will see only the edges now our hern stick looks quite good and i believe we are ready to be sculpting this so see you next time when we will be sculpting this hern stick before the sculpt we need to symmetrize and now we can 
just start sculpting this shape. As you can see, now I'm just adding the eyes. We need to turn on multi resolution and go to max level of 5. So I believe this is it for this part of the tutorial. Uh, join me next time. Thank you.